Hello everyone, Lawrence Fleming here again with another fun message. This one's the Christmas story. This is one that we're probably all familiar with, but it's always good to hear when we celebrate the birth of Jesus this month in about 10 days. And we can also share this message with friends and family if they don't already know it. It's a good time. It's a time of celebration. We give each other gifts to celebrate the birth of Jesus. It's a story that's been written about, movies made. It is something that we really all want to be a part of. Now, there are religions around the world that even know of Jesus. We know that Jesus is actually mentioned in the Quran. I mean, that's how popular or well-known his name was. There's no denying that Jesus existed. The only question is, is who he is. Well, we know who he is. Some of these other religions just think he was a good man or maybe even a prophet. But we know him as the Son of God, our Savior. And we're about to see him shortly. The rapture's got to be very close right now. There's still time in December to stay within the Revelation 12 sign and the fig tree generation. If we've got those interpretations right, it doesn't matter because we're in the end times. God will be welcoming us to the clouds very soon. Okay, I want to talk about this special story. So I'm going to read the Christmas story first. And then we're going to look at some cool prophecy and, and details that uh, God worked out within this story. Some of you may not even know. So stay with me and we'll look at these events around his birth. Now Christians should be excited for these times. As of course I am and you should be too. But if you're not a Christian, if you stay to the very end, I'll tell you what you can do to become one. And if you like this video, click like, please. If you want to hear more, subscribe. And of course, click the bell icon and you know when I release a new video. But if you subscribe, you should also be like liking it because it helps YouTube know how to place it. It figures who watches it and it finds people that have a like interest and that's how he puts it up there. So help me out by doing that. And you can share this in other videos to help people that have uh, needs. And of course, I can always use your prayers. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, the Christmas story is best told by Matthew and Luke. So have your Bibles ready. Matthew is the tax collector, and Luke is the doctor. Different ways of looking at the same story. So we have a slightly different story from each one. Nothing contradictory, but just a different view of the exact same event. So let's go ahead and start in Matthew 1.18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now, all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they will call his name Emmanuel, which translates God with us. 
And Joseph awoke from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. And he took Mary as his wife and kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son. And he called his name Jesus. Okay, let's switch over to Luke 26. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the descendants of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming in, he said to her, greetings favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was very perplexed at this statement and kept pondering what kind of salutation this was. And the angel said to her, don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Now Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am still a virgin? And the angel answered her and said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God. And behold, even your relative Elizabeth has also conceived. She's conceived a son in her old age and she who was called barren is now in her sixth month. Notice that John the Baptist and Jesus are related and six months apart. Verse 37, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, behold, the bond slave of the Lord, may it be done to me according to your will, to your word. And the angel departed from her. She called herself a bond slave. If you don't know what that means, that's somebody who was a slave and was set free by the master and chose to stay on and continue working. So that person becomes a bond slave and they never leave. That's the agreement. And when we go to heaven to be with Jesus, we're bond slaves of Jesus and we won't ever leave either. Okay, now let's look at uh, Luke 2.1. Now in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken in all the inhabited earth. The Roman Empire was big. This was the first census taking while Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone was on his way to register for the census, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up to Galilee, or from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the family of David, in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. And while they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to a firstborn son, and she wrapped him in clothes and laid him in the manger, because there was no room in the inn. Now I'm going to quickly inject one of my tidbits here. The Greek word kataluma means lodging place, not inn. And it's probably one of uh, Joseph's relatives lived there. A big common house that had a lot of rooms and a lot of family members were already there because all of his family would have had to come back and do the census. And they apparently got there late because Mary was pregnant. They couldn't go fast. So no room in the inn, no room in the house. Luke 2, 8. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock at night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes 
and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let us go straight to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph, and the baby was lying there in the manger. When they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. And all who heard it wondered at these things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. Well, the shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all that they had seen and heard, just as it had been told to them. Matthew 2, 1. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. Matthew 2, 3. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Gathering together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. And they said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the leaders of Judah. For out of you shall come forth a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called the Magi in and determined from them the exact time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for this child. And when you have found him, report to me so that I too can come and worship him. After hearing the king, they went their way and this followed the star which they had seen in the east. And it went on before them until, they, until it came and stood over them, the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. After coming into the house, they saw the child. You see the child is in the house now, he's not in the manger. After coming into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell to the ground and worshiped him. Then opening their treasures, they presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. By those, they were expensive items. They couldn't bring money from their country. It wouldn't be of any use there. But these were expensive things. Gold, we know. Frankincense and myrrh were expensive incense type things for, well, for embalming and for doing other things. So they have an aroma, but they were expensive. Verse 12, and having been warned by God in a dream not to return to Herod, the Magi left, their own, left for their own country by another way. Herod didn't want to worship Jesus. He was king. He didn't want competition. He was going to kill Jesus. And when they took off. He killed all the babies under two. An evil, evil person. And this person was in charge of the Jews in, in Israel. All right. Well, Jesus being Jewish had to go through all the normal rituals. Luke 2 21. And when eight days had passed before his circumcision, his name was then called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of their purification, according to the law of Moses, were completed, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male that opens the womb shall be called holy of the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what was said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. That's the story. Jesus fulfilled the law, all the things that were taught before, the covenant before, were replaced by the new covenant. The one in the upper room, the Last Supper. 
we're under this new covenant now. The temple has been destroyed and it's not needed technically, but as an historical place to sacrifice and worship God, the Jews are gonna to try to do it again, but put it back again. It won't have any effect. Jesus took care of all that. The curtain was torn on the old temple and eventually the temple was destroyed. Not one stone left upon another. Jesus is our sacrifice now. This month we're gonna celebrate his birthday. So what does Jesus literally mean? Well, first off, his name was not really Jesus back then. It, his name would have been Yeshua, the Hebrew name. Jesus is the Greek version of it. And it's pronounced probably more like Joshua or Yahshua. They didn't have J's in the Hebrew Bible. It would be God of salvation or literally deliverer. What happened after Mary became pregnant? Interesting to note that Jesus and John met before they were born. When Mary went to visit her cousin Elizabeth to see for herself what the angel told her. And when they were, you know, both expecting. And Elizabeth baby, John, leaped in her womb when Mary entered the house and called out to her. That was interesting how they would react that way. God is great in all the things that he does. And let's look at that in uh, Luke 3, 2. The word of God came to John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness, and he came into the district around the Jordan, preaching of baptism and repentance for the forgiveness of, of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make ready the way of the Lord, make his path straight. You can find that in Isaiah 43 through five. And when Jesus was born, it was surprising that the Jews didn't recognize him. Even more surprising that they plotted and eventually killed him. They were looking for the Messiah. They were looking for the Lion of Judah, not the Lamb of God. And they'd gotten so tied up in their law that if anybody came that didn't match with what they were teaching, they were a threat. Don't condemn them. The Jews are still the chosen people. And the remainder of the Bible that we're about to enter is about them. The 70th day of Daniel is about the Jews. Okay, now who are these shepherds that the angels appeared to? Well, their job was to raise the lambs that were used as sacrifices in the temple. Holy lambs without blemish. Remind you of anyone? And when a lamb is born, it is taken to a stable and wrapped in swaddling clothes, the same kind of clothes that Jesus was wrapped in. And they were just basically narrow strips of cloth that they would wrap around the lamb, or in this case, Jesus, to restrict them, to comfort them. They've been captive for nine months. They can handle a little bit more. And like I said, Jesus was wrapped in the same cloth in the manger that the shepherds would have used. That's why they knew where to go. Jesus was born in the same manger that the holy lambs were born in. I love these parallels. Now, as to the Christmas star, we're not completely sure because we've never been completely confident on the date. So the star could have been a Nova and traveling through the sky in the right direction so that they would know to follow it. It could have had a tail coming back off of it so they knew which direction to go. And that's a popular belief, but it could have also been Jupiter. Jupiter is known as the king star or the king of the planets. The planet means wandering star. Jupiter was involved in the 
Revelation 12 sign back in 2017. So it could have been. Now, why the Magi from the East? And why do they know about Jesus? Or in fact, they even care to bring all these valuables to him. Well, we have to go back to the Babylonian exile in 556, 586 BC. After 70 years, which God had told them, the captivity formally ended when the Persian conqueror of Babylonia, Cyrus the, the Great, gave the Jews permission to return to their land. The problem is, it's not all return. They had become very comfortable as captives. They'd adapted to their ways, not all good. But the Magi were probably taught by their parents about the things of their Jewish ancestry. And these were people that studied the stars. Back then, a lot of smart people were called upon to do that because they didn't have calendars and they didn't have clocks. They used the solar calendar very little. They used the moon all the time. The moon looks at a shorter period of time and you can pretty much narrow down what's happening that way. And this is some of the problem we have with those who try to interpret time. Are you going to use the Jewish time, the lunar time, or the Gregorian time of the sun? You're going to get two different times. The Jewish calendar was 360 days. It's easy to see how people can get off. Now, in looking at these stars, they knew what the sign meant. They knew that the king of the Jews was to be born. That's why they left. And they may not have ridden on camels. They may have ridden on horses. You've seen these Arabian horses, but that didn't have the connotation of the Middle East. So we think that they brought camels in to, to do that. And because they didn't really know anything about the manger, they put all kinds of animals in there and not one animal is mentioned in the Bible being there. It's assumed that they're lambs because of the shepherds and the term swaddling clothes was used, which the lambs used. Okay. The only problem the Magi had is they didn't have all the details. They didn't remember where the Messiah was to be born. No. They had to go to Herod and find out where the Messiah was to be born. The problem was that, that scared Herod because he didn't want competition and it scared the people because they were expecting the Lion of Judah. That would have meant war and nobody wanted that. Now, if they'd known the Lamb of God, they would have been excited. Now, they wanted someone to basically get rid of their captured Rome. Once the wise men figured out what was going on, they didn't help them anymore. They didn't talk about it. Okay, now let's look at the Old Testament references on why he was, why he should have been recognized. Let's look at the virgin birth. Turn with me to Isaiah 7:14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin will be with child and bear a son, and she will call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. What about being born in Bethlehem? I mentioned it up above when we were reading the New Testament scripture, but this is the Old Testament verse in Micah 5. But as for you, Bethlehem, too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you one will go forth for me to be ruler in Israel. So he was fulfilling all these things. How about the descendant, descendant of Abraham? All the way back in Genesis, Genesis 22, 18. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. And Jesus is a descendant. That's why we have the lineology of uh, Jesus in two Gospels. We think that one's from, for Joseph and one's for Mary. 
And that's a different study, so I'm not going to get too sidetracked. What about the crucifixion? Talked about in Psalms. For dogs have surrounded me. A band of evildoers has encompassed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. Now, this was described in detail long before the method of execution was even practice. Now, in fact, you should read all of Psalm 22. In verse 1, uh, it talks about, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? It covers in very good detail. I would uh, say a few prayers before and after. It's, it's some, somewhat hard to read. You might want to go ahead and read Psalm 23 after. But this explains, you know, why God turns his back on Jesus when he's on the cross. He can't look at the sin that Jesus is bearing. He's taken on all of our sin. And that can be the worst sin in the world Jesus took on. God couldn't look upon that. Fortunately, it was short-lived, but probably the first time Jesus was without his jolly connection and probably very difficult for him. So again, thank him for what he did. Now, some Bibles suggest that there are more than 300 Old Testament scriptures that are in there regarding this topic that we're on. Now, I'm not going to go on any more with those. Let's take a look about the time that we celebrate Christ's birth. Now, we've been for many years celebrating it on December 25th. Oh, it's not necessarily his birthday or even the year. Let's look first at the year. I mentioned that there's two calendars, the Gregorian calendar, also called the New Style calendar. It's a solar dating system. It's what we currently use. It was proclaimed in 1582 by Pope Gregory, that's the Gregorian calendar, and as a reform of the previous Julian calendar, as they learn more and more how to calculate the time of the Earth eclipse around the sun, they had to adjust it, and that's what he did. Now, attempts were made to calculate back to Jesus's birth, and well, they missed it. The confusion concerning Jesus's birth started years before. First off, in the first 300 years, they didn't celebrate his birthday. His death and resurrection was more important. And technically it is the death and resurrection are what save us. But the people involved that brought Jesus into this, into this life and took care of him, they deserve adoration too. Maybe not as much as Mary gets in the specific church, but definitely adoration. So anyhow, an error was made in the sixth century when a Scythian monk named Dionysus uh, sat down and tried to separate the year or the years into two time frames before Christ and after Christ, because that's really more important. And so by doing that split, he hoped to point out the people that were before and the people that were after. Now, he being a Christian monk, uh, he wanted history to reflect all this. These designations were not used at all during Christ's ministry or in the first 300 years, as I said. So his attempt to calculate Jesus' birth, well, he made several critical errors. And he was off by, you know, seven to, you know, two to seven years. Most scholars today believe that he's off by four. So that means Jesus would have been born around 4 BC. And again, not in December. And to note, uh, there is no year zero. The calendar goes straight from 1 BC to 1 AD. They said before Christ and after Christ. Well, they technically brought in their Latin. So it's AD, Anno Domini, the year of the Lord. There's a lot of Latin in the Bible and in everything that we do, omnipresent, omni is Latin, rapture is Latin. It's not in the normal Bible. So that's why people say it's not there, but it is, it just has to be the right version. And today, those that don't like Christ, that want him obliterated, taken off of everything, removed. We can't worship God in schools anymore. They don't want to teach about God and Jesus. Sad the way things have become. But BC has been replaced by BCE before the Common Era, and AD has been replaced by CE 
for Common Era. There's so much anti-Jesus going on right now. I can't wait to get out of here. Let's take a look at December 25th and figure out what's wrong with that. And I'm not going to give you a good date because scholars are mixed on it. But we're going to look at some of the reasons for the 25th and, and look at some of the other days that we can look at. And like I said, the first three centuries, they didn't celebrate it. So nobody really knew by the time they got around to calculating when it was. And early on, they were persecuted heavily. That's assuming being fed by lions is considered persecution. So they had to meet in secret. And if you remember seeing the fish symbol, it was meant to be a house of the Lord, a place where they could meet. And they could put it anywhere. It could be on the door mantle. It could be on a tree. It could be on a grave. They could put, put it in the dirt and then erase it when everybody's there. It was a secret way of them getting together without being arrested and persecuted. And there were some of the pagan religions of the day that used a fish, so it wasn't going to stand out. Now, finally, when Constantine uh, got into power, they were able to be more open. The church officials settled on December 25th at the end of the third century. They likely wanted this date to coincide with existing pagan festivals so that they could dampen the pagan uh, festivals and perhaps preach to them about Jesus. They were honoring Saturn, the Roman god of agriculture, and Mithra, the Persian god of light. And there were some other special days uh, in January and, and before this, so they were kind of fitting him right in the middle. And hopefully they did save some pagans, but the problem is, is some of the pagan beliefs creeped into Christmas. That's where we have Christmas trees and some of the other things that we've got. It's what you use them for. It's not that they were originally tied to pagan, so Christmas is pagan. No. Nah. Giving away presents. Whatever they do, they were doing it for Jesus. So there's nothing unholy about a Christmas tree. God created it. Now, do you know Jesus personally during this Christmas season? Do you know why we celebrate Christmas and why it's a good time of getting together with friends and family and sharing the love of Christ with everybody? Well, if you don't, you can invite Jesus into your heart. And you can speak to him right now. He's listening. But you have to really mean it from your heart. And you too can be saved. You can be a Christian. It's not by your works, but it's by accepting the free gift of salvation. And if you think you're interested, you can repeat this prayer after me. Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I repent of my sinful ways and ask you to come into my heart. I accept your free gift of salvation that you paid for with your blood on the cross. I want to be a Christian. I want to be born again. And I want eternal life. Now, saying these words alone won't save you. But if you mean them from your heart, if you have the faith in Jesus that he died for you, you will be saved. Now, I hope this Christmas story brings you closer to God, closer to Jesus. All these players, they lived and died. They really did. We have other accounts besides the Bible, secular accounts. So believe in Jesus and accept his gift and then tell others about him, which is what I'm doing, so that they too can be saved. That's really our goal now until we're gathered out of here. Let's get as many people as we can. So until we meet in the skies, God bless.